Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mr. Hassan Khalid, who is doing a PhD currently in information and decision making. He did his master's in business analytics from USC, University of South California. And he did his bachelor's from IBA Karachi in BBA, I think. Marketing. Yeah. yeah. और उसके बाद इन्होंने अफिनिटी में काम किया अभी ये आईबी में टीचर भी हैं और इनसे मैं सवाल करूंगा रिगार्डिंग डेटा एनालिटिक्स और डेटा एनालिटिक्स एज अ बिजनेस ग्रेजुएट क्या होता है डेटा एनालिटिक्स व्हाट यू शुड लर्न एज अ स्टूडेंट इन टुडेस डे अगर आपको मास्टर्स करना है यूएस में तो व्हाट एग्जैक्टली यू शुड स्टडी एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग एनी मोर टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड एंड आस्क मिस्टर हसन खालिद अबाउट डेटा एनालिटिक्स वेलकम हसन भाई फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सबसे पहले हम सवाल कर लेते हैं व्हाट इज डेटा एनालिटिक्स so the way we look at data analytics is in four broad categories there is there is descriptive analytics which is just you looking at data and telling people what has happened then there is predictive analytics which is you trying to predict what is going to happen mm-hmm. and then there is prescriptive analytics which is you telling people what they should do let's say telling a company what policy they should make what offers and schemes they should put out and stuff like that right so these three major categories today define data analytics all right and why is this important to study today this data analytics field so regardless of whether you are in a business or wherever you are well technically anything is a business right whether you're running a charity or a not for profit or a for profit business everything is at the end of the day a business right and so businesses tend to have problems that are repetitive okay and the existence of data allows us a to maybe overcome a lot of those repetitive problems and what i mean by that is for example you may have a problem in workforce scheduling right and okay um you may have a problem in let's say a lot of your stock going to waste because you overproduced or you may have problems in let's say your equipment going bad because well you can't predict when it's going to go bad so you can't maybe do any preventive maintenance you can't fix it before it breaks down right so businesses face problems that are extremely repetitive in nature and they are repetitive across different industries as well to some extent right yep. and so it becomes very important for business graduates to be able to take data that is being captured at an increasingly large scale and be able to convert that into business insight right so the time of um, making decisions based on intuition which was very true even like 30 40 years back now when you make a decision people ask okay based on what data or based on what yeah. insight, right so that is why it just becomes very important for any business and for any business graduate to have a strong foothold in data analytics what tools should a person learn kyunki bahut saare log bolte hain dashboarding power bi ye wo ye wo but mm-hmm. what you should learn to start to get yourself started <laughs> uh, i am going to get some flack for this but the first thing you should learn is statistics okay the very problem most data analysts at least in the last 5 6 years has been that you have a lot of tools now yeah tools are easy to learn right tableau is easy to learn point and click power bi easy to learn point and click and even the more extensive machine learning models are slowly becoming point and click like there's altrix which does a lot of machine learning point and click based um yeah. r has a package called rattle that does a lot of things point and click based so the the part where you say you know what i'm going to learn 10 different tools is becoming less important than knowing what to look for a good data analyst can probably get more done in excel than a bad data analyst can get done in sql and r and python combined right interesting fact, yeah. excel excel remains to this day the number one learned data analytics tool and the reason is that you can get a lot done with just very simple descriptive stats and you can get a lot of th- things done with very simple data cleaning and data analysis the the place where people lack is statistics so they don't really know what those models do they don't know what the assumptions of those models yeah. are they don't check those assumptions when you don't check the assumptions the model doesn't work and then you come back and tell people like me oh you know this doesn't work so okay. then i think to learn the statistics all right so moving on on ending on to that question i would like to know something about global trends especially in the us since you are in the us you did your masters from there you are doing your phd from there what work is exactly going on in the us regarding data analytics we tend to have this image of everything that is being done in the us is going to be um, you know state of the art cutting edge and what not yeah. well that's probably true for big companies right so maybe okay. what google is doing in ai and ml is going to be something that is very state of the art that is very cutting edge that is you know 
paving the way forward. But for most companies, their problems are very similar to those that are in Pakistani companies. And that okay. is that they have a lot of data and they don't know what to do with it. So a lot of the jobs that even today exist in the US and a lot of the jobs that my friends do in the US are more towards the part of getting data into a proper format, making some basic decisions based on data, maybe even doing some dashboarding. They, they are still a lot of companies are at the starting of data analytics rather than being at the cutting edge, if you know what I mean, right? Okay. So in terms of the US market, you, you will still find a huge market for um, companies who are looking to start out in data analytics or the, who are coming to you and saying, you know what, we have like five years of data that is captured. Mm -hmm. Can you do some customer profiling for us or can you do some sales forecasting for us and stuff like that and so that is still today where the where a lot a large part of the market exists even today very nice adding on to that what's the path after bachelors a person could take if they want to go into this field let's say i just graduated a bba student or a acf guy or maybe maths or economics and if i want to go into data analytics what paths are available for me so are, are we talking specifically from graduating in Pakistan or are we talking overall? Graduating in Pakistan. The best thing that you can do is invest in a master's outside, outside of Pakistan if you want to okay. be in. Um, the reason is, it's not like we don't have a good faculty in Pakistan. We do. We have people who understand data analytics. We have companies that understand data analytics. The problem is you don't have data. So a, a lot of the companies, they have not even started to put their data on computers. So I've had clients while I was in Pakistan who said, our data is in physical files. And if you want the data, you have to manually enter it. Man, yeah. Right. So one thing that does exist is that, okay, then you don't get a master's from abroad because um, you will find that companies abroad will be collaborating with universities. They have better um, data. The universities have better resources and you can learn a lot more from there. Um, other than that, like obviously that's not something that's feasible for everyone. Scholarships Everybody, are yeah. and uh, other than that, it's just very expensive. I would say that you need to make a list of tools and skills that you need to learn and focus on both of them separately. So like I said, statistics for me is a skill and you need to learn statistics if you want to come into this field. Sorry, I, I will cut you here. I want to mm -hmm. I want you to go a step inside statistics and tell me some topics which you could learn. So I will say that all points till the course that we did called statistical inference are mandatory. So for example, you should know um, what the mean is, what the median is, what the mode is. Um, you should know what robustness means. So for example, if I say that the median is a more robust measure than the mean, you should know what, what I'm saying. Um, yeah. You should have a good understanding of hypothesis testing, of central limit theorems. Um, should have a good understanding of the normal distribution and other, other very common probability distributions. And then when you move on to like machine learning, you should have a good sense of the assumptions behind each model. So for example, even a linear regression has like five or six different assumptions. And if those assumptions are not satisfied, um, the linear regression model will not perform well. So you need to have a good understanding of what those assumptions are. How do I check them? If they fail, what can I do? Right. And all of that comes from statistics, essentially. All right. Very good. Let's go back to what you were saying uh, about list of tools and skills. So one is statistics. What else? Um, you should know one database language and the most common one is like SQL. So you should know how to query data from a database and get it into the format that you want. Um, you should know at least one good programming language for data analytics. And in that case, even Python comes in or R comes in. Other than that, you should know at least one tool for dashboarding and visualizations. So you should know either Tableau or Power BI. There used to be something called Click. I don't know how, how good they are now. You could even learn how to do this in R or Python. Understood. I, I think this is very nice. But I want to add something here. Okay, as a student, let's say I'm a student right now in my third or fourth year. Mm -hmm. What courses should I take in my university which will help me learn maybe some of this, what you mentioned above. If you're a business student, A, you need to take a CS course, any okay. CS course. If you're a CS student, you need to take a business course. The, the reason for this is that, well, A, for business students, CS often becomes a barrier because if you're, if you're trying to apply abroad for masters, they want one CS course on your transcript. 
right? Um, yeah. So it, it's good that way. And other than that, like business students tend to have this fear of programming. And I feel like programming is something which is fairly easy, right? Like, so it's good to have those students break out of that shell and take up programming class and, you know, just get over it. 